Step one is remove the bracket here for the arm. I'm really happy that it didn't get smashed. Nothing really got broken. There's the front nose that I put on a clear shield. And I think that that probably helped a lot when I crashed into that tree. And I think that I hit it here. I'm not sure. I think I hit it right here, actually. But we're going to try to get the NAS out without taking apart the whole quadcopter, which would be pretty cool. So let's start and get this thing out of here. And then we'll go to step two. Now we've got the NASA out, and we have a little bit of room here. So what we're going to do is take this out, we're going to plug it in, and we're going to start knocking it on my desk here. And uh, we're going to see if we can reset the gyro. Before I do that, I'm going to show you what it says on NASA Lite, if you have this problem, what to expect to see. USB. And see if that, that was what we were using yesterday, so and my English might not be so good today because I have come off a 14 hour shift. Now we're plugged in and now we are connected. Thank God it's gonna work. Okay, so let's show you what the problem is. Sorry for that long delay there, guys. Error, you see this? Error in the Y. You can see that error there. And I can check IMU status, it needs calibration. Basic Cali, and you see that error is still there. It's not correcting it. So next step, we're gonna smack this NASA around and see if we can loosen that up. So we will unplug it. So this was in the uh, aircraft this way in the HPX, and the convex says it hit on this side, but the convex is reversed, so it's probably hit on this side. So we're going to smack it the opposite that most guys have to smack it. Sensitive equipment. And there, we're connected now. So there is a, an X2 has to be hooked up to the uh, NASA box as well. And look at that, folks. A few smacks, and we've got our Y back. I don't have to use the uh, V2 NASA anymore as a substitute. We're going to rehook up this thing, but first we're going to calibrate it. So let's get it flat and recalibrate. That's step two. Well, we don't have to use Storman's NASA now. We can use ours because we fixed it with smacking it like a BSA British motorcycle. Who says? those Russians hitting their cars to get them running with a hammer doesn't work. It does work, even with electronics from China. So there you go. And that's the original NASA M there with V2 on it now, <clears throat> which is a mistake, and I know Starman's not going to like that I put it on there, but I'm probably going to go back to the original that he supplied with the uh, CD. But we're going to get this flying now, so let's continue on putting it back into the HPX. And as you can see, we've only taken off an arm to replace this NASA. Now pretty basic, I centered that NASA in there, I don't think you'll be able to see that too well, but and aligned it with the holes on the bottom, that I have see-through holes on the bottom of the frame, so I can line up the edges. Sorry for the movement. So that is now attached in the center of the quad. What we're going to do is we're going to put back on our bracket, our clamps here, around the tube first, then insert the tube and then put the screws in. That's the hardest part of replacing one of these, but like I said, we only took out one clamp, so that's not a lot to ask for. And we are uh, 30 minutes into this repair now. Been pretty much real time, guys, just taking longer to turn on the camera. Okay, getting really tired now, so I'm gonna get this finished up. We've got the tra uh, transmitter on. We've got the NASA plugged in and registering. First, you want to check your check IMU status. And it won't let me check IMU status. So, maybe we'll close NASA light and we'll reopen it. Got the jet quad up there. AVG 
Gucci. I have to pay for that one day. Anyways, here we go. Let's check it out. Check IMU status is not working. But we have zero in the Y. And it's changing when we move the quadcopter. So I guess it doesn't need it. <laughs> but I did restore default settings, so we want to make sure that we've got this set properly. And we can check here. Let's see. Basic mounting gain. Gain looks good at 100, that'll fly. Let's check the sticks. Normal. Aileron. Elevator. Right. Right. Throttle. Up. Down. Back and forth. Seems a bit shallow there though. As you can see on this side to the right. All the way to the left. So we are going to uh, check. Let's see if our... Uh, Yeah, we got man, we got standard standard setup, so we are gonna calibrate though, just to be safe. Full extents, not too much. Don't push and bend the plastic. Maybe do some other switches. I think it works, but who knows? It might be unrequired. There we go, and finish. Center position, and go. Rudder. Good enough, I guess. Oh, trims. Don't want to trim it. There we go. Good. Okay, so let's uh, unplug and see if we can arm it. The IMU calibration might not be able to happen with the uh, transmitter on, so I could plug, unplug it, or depower, unpower the uh, transmitter, and we'll go back to tools, and now we can check IMU status. No need to calibration. Procedure can be skipped. Even after smacking it. So, I think we fixed it, guys. Let's uh, start up the motors. Maybe not. Well, not with it plugged into the uh, assistant. That's right. So let's unplug it. See if we were victorious. That's how you fix a NASA with a jam gyro. Maybe Bruce should start smacking that afro naze or whatever it is around might be able to fix it. Did I fix the NASA? Did smashing it on a tile front step help it? We're gonna find out if I have a spare NASA now, which I bought yesterday, and we'll get here in you know the usual six weeks. Or I'm gonna have to use it or the V2 to get this going again. Hopefully we'll be doing proximity tomorrow at the new park, the Valhalla of mini quad parks, where we have forest, ponds, open field, goalposts, and lots of seagulls. Looks like it's fixed. My NASA is back to normal.